is uh, to better assess uh, the IDN uh, penetration and if IDNs are really used. Um, what are IDNs? IDNs, uh, uh, it's a short, for those of you who don't know, um, stands for Internationalized Domain Names. So Internet uh, started with uh, the Latin script, but then at a certain moment uh, uh, there was a need uh, to allow people and communities not speaking, uh, um, in uh, not having their language uh, in Latin uh, to be more connected uh, and to take advantage of the Internet. And therefore, uh, the international uh, technical Internet community, they started work on uh, protocols to allow uh, people to get online by using domain names uh, uh, that have uh, at the second level and more recently at the top level um, scripts uh, uh, using characters that belong to scripts that are known the Latin scripts. Uh, so uh, we have uh, recently heard a um, few days ago, two days ago, that at the beginning of uh, um, the uh, IGF meeting, the 8th IGF meeting, that uh, ICANN has uh, uh, proposed uh, three new uh, GTLDs uh, for delegation, and those three new GTLDs that have been proposed for delegation are in uh, a non-Latin script, and more specifically is uh, uh, the Arabic word for web or network, uh, the Russian word for online, and the Chinese word for game. And those have been proposed uh, by ICANN for um, delegation. And those will be the first uh, uh, non-Latin characters uh, used uh, in uh, generic top-level domains. Um, as I said, uh, this year report uh, um, takes advantage of this partnership we have established with Verisign to get more data about the use of uh, IDNs, especially in the .com and .net um, environment. And that has provided us uh, um, a great picture of uh, what and how IDNs are, um, are used. We have um, a great uh, panel today made uh, of, uh, um, uh, let's say, people who are uh, differently engaged in the industry and that can contribute uh, to address some of the questions uh, that this panel uh, should uh, respond. Questions like, uh, what can we do all to promote IDNs? Uh, um, what kind of, uh, uh, let's say, measures should be taken to facilitate, part of facilitate the access uh, uh, to the Internet uh, for those communities who are not uh, speaking uh, uh, with languages that are linked to, to the Latin script? Um, in uh, uh, the next 12 months, there will be uh, many changes in the Internet because there will be a lot of new GTLDs coming up in the market. Many of them uh, will be um, non-Latin GTLDs, and that will change uh, um, the GTLD, but also the entire domain name system landscape. So we'll, we'll see these uh, major changes in the next 5 to 10 years. Going back to the panel, uh, um, I'd like to start to introduce the first, uh, the first speaker, and I would like, first of all, to thank all the, the speakers. We have also a new speaker who um, is not in the, in the online program, and uh, um, a speaker who can provide uh, the view, the registrar's perspective, because uh, when talking about registration of domain names, uh, most of the registries uh, who are, uh, let's say, the backbone, uh, the behind-the-scene uh, architect, uh, of the management uh, of uh, domain names, uh, they don't sell directly domain names, uh, but they go through uh, a network uh, of accredited registrars. And we are lucky enough to have one registrar today uh, with us. There were not so many registrars, uh, uh, probably just uh, you can count them on one hand, registrars uh, participating in uh, this year IGF. Uh, and we are lucky enough to have one registrar uh, with us today who can give you the perspective of a registrar, what can be done at uh, the registrar level to, to promote IDNs. Um, that said, I'd like to introduce the, um, the first speaker, um, Emily Taylor. Um, she's the author, the main author of uh, this year's report as the, the previous two years' report. Uh, um, she has started this uh, um, cooperation with URID uh, to develop uh, the early report on IDNs. Uh, and uh, um, this year, as I said, she has gone through a quite uh, uh, monumental work because of the amount of data that we have received from, from very signed. Um, she's uh, also um, she has been involved in different uh, internet, uh, um, let's say, um, areas, uh, including uh, um, with uh, uh, review and most recently um, the uh, second accountability and transparency review team. Uh, of the effectiveness of the ICON policy development process. 
So I'd like to leave uh, um, the floor to um, Emily. She's going to um, speak uh, and introduce uh, the report uh, with uh, a lot of data. And uh, uh, for those of you who are interested uh, also in uh, seeing uh, the uh, report, uh, uh, online report, uh, um, the report is going to be published today on the URI.eu site. And if I can just have one screen with uh, the slides, please. Okay, thank you. So. Thank you very much, Giovanni. We're, well, we're just uh, getting the slides up onto the screen. Um, Well, it's a great pleasure to, to, to be here introducing this year's uh, World Report. And as Giovanni said, we have um, had the collaboration and cooperation of, of, of many people. Uh, the, uh, Giovanni mentioned Verisign, but I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the cooperation of, of CNNIC and also the Russian CCDLD, whose representative is in the room, as well as many others, including the center community. So uh, the next slide is uh, the data sample that we have been looking at represents 90% of the world's registered domain names. And the special focus this year has been on usability and also how, domain, how IDNs are being used in practice. We looked in particular at the Asia and Pacific region uh, this year, but we also have country case studies which we've been building up over the years which cover the Arab states and also um, uh, the Russian Federation. Um, then there's some facts and figures, as you would expect in this sort of uh, review, as well as some industry opinions. So the next slide. Justin Hedler, I'm, I don't know if, if that's at all visible to you on, on the screen because we, we've got sort of rather nice light green on white. But um, uh, th really this slide just highlights some of the major findings of the report, which is that out of over 250 million domain names registered in the world, we found 5.1 million uh, IDNs, internationalized domain names. And so that's just 2% of the world's registered domain names. And when you think about the comparison between offline and online life and the number of people who are unfamiliar with Latin script in the world, that's a rather startlingly low percentage, in my opinion. Uh, in .eu, this is a URID report, so uh, EU has uh, offers internationalized domain names in Latin script and also Greek and Cyrillic and had, at the end of 2012, 61,000 uh, internationalized domain names. So we've been looking at, um, uh, you know, at, in the usability study, and the five most popular browsers, the ones that we use on our desktops, are now, in their most recent version, supporting IDNs pretty well. But the same is not true in mobile devices or, um, uh, or in... Um, web-based applications either. So we found that 92% of, of the world's most popular websites really don't recognize um, IDNs. Uh, for example, in the creation of user accounts, you're often asked to give an email address. Uh, all, uh, pretty much all of those uh, don't recognize uh, IDNs and also don't recognize IDNs as links. So in this modern world where we are what we share on social networks, if you type in a URL that is in, in non-Latin script, uh, for the most part, that won't actually just function. But that said, so that's the kind of dreary bad news. But um, on the hopeful side, there is a very, very strong near perfect correlation between the script of the IDN that the, what language that is 
is leading you to expect. And if you follow it through, there it is in the language of the website. That's, I think, very important. And we can start to say that IDNs have a, have a very important part to play in the multilingual ecosystem. And also, just for completeness, the first IDN email was sent successfully in 2012. So, the next slide. We've been looking very much at usability and usage this year. And so, uh, the, we, ca we had to define usage in some way. So, we, we defined it in, as the relative level of ease of use, predictability, and memorability of IDNs in internet services and applications. So we were looking at browsers, and the, and the, the main finding is it, it's, it's, it's getting better in traditional browsers, but it's still very poor in mobile devices. And again, when you think that uh, not, not just in developing countries are mobile devices, uh, the, the, the device of choice increasingly for accessing the internet, but also in developed countries too. This is an important gap to fill. Web-based services, we actually checked um, across Cyrillic, Arabic, and Han script IDNs um, across 13 of the world's most popular websites. And we looked at, at email across traditional web-based email providers and mobile applications as well. So what did we find? There's actually, when you're looking at web-based services, there's a difference in the way that, um, that they treat full IDNs, so that's something that is, say, Cyrillic script, uh, both in the, in, the, in the name bit and the ending, and in the hybrid IDNs, by which I mean, say, a, a Chinese script dot com, so you've got two scripts in play in the same domain name. Generally speaking, the treatment of hybrid domains is a little bit more developed, um, but you still see, I don't know if you can see the, the little screenshot there, we've got uh, Twitter, if you put in a hybrid domain name as a link, you, you can do that, but what it will show to your followers is a bunch of meaningless letters and numbers, which is the underlying code. So in terms of usability and memorability, not fantastic. And as user identifiers, so to set up a Facebook account, to set up an account in Twitter or any of the, uh, or LinkedIn, forget it, you can't use an email address at this time. And that's a very important uh, gap to fill. So the, as I mentioned, the first IDN email was sent in 2012. And when you consider that IDNs have actually been on the market and for sale for 12 years now, it's perhaps a surprise that the first IDN email took 12 years to be sent. And it, it does just highlight the gap in usability that we have been finding. And speaking to colleagues in, in registries uh, that have deployed IDNs, they tell us that providers are now able to send IDN emails very successfully. But because an, I an email will have to travel through so many intermediate steps in order to arrive at its destination. If a single one of those can't handle the IDN email, it will just barf it, it will just fail. And so uh, this provides a disincentive for providers to offer this service because it's a very difficult support mode to, to analyze, to, to identify, because as far as the user is concerned, it will have failed and it's probably the provider's fault. So until that chain is working end to end, it, it will deter people from uh, providing it. But on the bright side, within China, Core Mail now has 600 million users offering full internationalization. So it's, it's coming. But if you look at all of the big name providers in email, whether it's Yahoo, whether it's Outlook, Microsoft, Gmail, Google, uh, on, and the I, iPhone email clients, none of them are working with IDN emails, we found. So um, the next slide, please. Let's look at the sort of usage, because you register a domain name, but you don't have to use it. It will still be there. And generally speaking, the usage of IDN emails lags behind the more traditional 
counterpart. So uh, we found uh, across, there are two uh, hybrids in this slide. We're looking at sort of 30-ish percent, 30 to 40 percent of use in websites plus another 12 to 15 percent in redirects versus the Russian fully IDN domain where they've made huge strides in the last year in improving the, the instance of usage. So the trends are going in the right direction, but there is still a long way to go. Next slide, please. Um, but we talked about the correlation between language of the website and the associated IDN, and it really is quite amazing to see uh, how far these, these maps. So when you look at a, a Greek script.eu IDN, the languages, the only languages you see are Greek, English, and you know there's, there's a, a hodgepodge of other languages, but they're really uh, very few. And Cyrillic script, you're looking at English, Bulgarian in the European Union, Russian, Portuguese for some reason, I, I don't understand. That comes through in both the .com and .eu, and I have no idea why. But and then the Latin script, as you would expect with a script that's used across multiple languages within Europe, you've got a, an array of languages. German features very strongly, and so do many others. So, next slide, please. Uh, this is a little bit, well, this is one to study uh, afterwards, but it, take it from me. When you look at the .com uh, and net IDNs, where you've got a data sample of, that is, is about 100,000, so a very, uh, a very nice sample here. There is an almost perfect correlation between the language of the website and the script of the domain. So taking Chinese, which is the first line, uh, we've got 40, nearly 41,000 uh, in that script, in the hand script, and about 41,000 websites in that language. And so there's, nearly, there's an over 99% correlation this is an extremely hopeful and exciting correlation that shows uh, IDN's role as signaling uh, content in a particular language. Thank you. And again, we, look, we saw that there's quite a high level of redirect, but when you look at the script of the redirect, and, and the Korean is my favorite, 95% of Korean script IDNs that, are, that go somewhere else uh, they go to web content in the Korean language, and, and similar correlations are found across, across others. The, uh, an, another study by um, uh, UNESCO, uh, ISOC, and OECD has found a strong correlation between local content and the, the location of servers. And so we looked, sort of taking this, we looked at the country of hosting so the, the pie chart on the left shows the sort of the, uh, the country of hosting for the general EU uh, registrars. It's, you know, it's, it's showing a distribution. Uh, on the right, you show the distribution of hosting of internationalized domain names, and it's different. And in particular, you see more are hosted in Germany, where there is a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, diacritics in the Latin script, but also you see that Bulgaria and Greece come in uh, as part of the top 10 countries of hosting of IDNs, whereas they're not featured at all in the, in the top countries of hosting of other IDNs, uh, sorry, of ID, other .eu domain names. So here again we have some interesting, uh, in my view, interesting uh, information about, so the content is kept locally, it's hosted locally. It starts to build up a virtuous circle, a virtuous eco ecosystem of local language. So I'm not going to go into detail on Asia and Pacific because we have speakers from the region, um, both remotely and here, who will talk about their own experiences. But just to highlight quickly that we have developed over the years a matrix which has on, on the one side country and language factors, and on the other side, the way that the country code, the CCTLD itself, its policies, its pricing, all of those contribute to uh, making conditions good or, or otherwise for the deployment of IDNs. 
but just to say that in our study, even the countries in that top golden right-hand uh, 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 quadrant, China, Co uh, Republic of Korea, and Russian Federation, really still, in my opinion, although doing remarkable work, are still very far from achieving the potential of those markets for their, those users. On facts and figures, um, generally there is growth year on year, but in fact that masks that some of the larger IDN registries have in fact um, uh, shrunk over the 12-month period. The, the tiny little line at the bottom you can see is the Arab states, and I, I think we just have a, a, a no, I haven't gone into that, but that, that it's really quite remarkable how far, uh, you know, the, the, the scale of deployment in the Arab states is, is below that of the rest of the world in volumes. However, in terms of percentage growth, it's actually pretty healthy. So the growth rates, in a nutshell, they're much more peaky, they're much more uh, volatile in IDNs than they are. The, the, the growth rates in, in the whole uh, register are, are now fairly level, around 5 to 10 percent, whereas they're all over the place with IDNs. It's new. Okay, next slide. We asked registries, and this year for the first time registrars, and we have Peter here as a, as a, as a welcome super sub uh, uh, on the panel. We asked them a, a series of questions, but there are just two I want to highlight here. How do you think IDN uptake is doing versus your expectations. And in the main, it's fairly in the middle. I think it's sort of, it, the averages for both registries and registrars are still in the two point something. You know, so they're not delighted, but their expectations are probably fairly low as well in some cases. And the next slide uh, we ask, how do you think end user awareness is? And again, I think that probably, that again, they're fairly similar. The registries and registrars uh, think about the same, and it's fairly stable over the years. But generally speaking, they don't think that users know about IDNs, and I, I agree with them, to be honest. Next slide. So what do we learn from all of this whistle-stop tour? Um, IDNs clearly have a very important role in supporting the growth of multilingual content, which is actually what this is all about. This isn't about just counting domain names. It's about how people navigate the Internet. And when you think of, uh, you know, we're familiar with the Latin script, and you think when you visit a country where you're going through an airport and you don't understand the script of any of the, the signs, how do you know where you are and how do you know where you've been? The deployment of IDNs is increasing and there is, there is progress on several fronts, but there is much more progress to make. The Director General of UNESCO made a statement this year encouraging the technical community to work even harder to, to, um, to uh, make deployment a reality. I think in the next year we'll see deployment of perhaps 100 new GTLDs in different scripts. And my belief is that that will provide an impetus for investment by areas of the industry that are definitely capable of supporting this, but have had other priorities. Um, I would also just like to highlight a personal observation, which is that the advocacy of the registries, uh, whether it's the NIC, whether it's the CCTLDRU, whether it's the Korean registry, they have really been tireless in advocating the adoption of IDNs and lobbying major uh, providers to support them better. So I, I think without them, it would be a lot grimmer, the picture. But I think at the present, we have a fairly negative cycle because there is low uptake. And so that, because there isn't really a drive from users saying, we want this better, there's a fairly poor user experience and it's fairly sustained over the years. That again just deters people from using them, which again, uh, doesn't really lead to high user awareness. So we're sort of trapped in that at the moment. Something needs to change. And 
we kind of adopted the uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs as a, as a model to, to try to understand where we are and what needs to happen. And I think we're really still in, uh, I think, what um, Maslow would call the hygiene factors. They basically don't work very well at the moment, and until they work, you're not going to get the new market offerings, you're not going to get the early adopters and mass adoption. So there needs to be some important foundational work uh, that, that will drive uh, wider uptake. The potential is definitely there. So, uh, and and there, is, there are some encouraging signs, but more needs to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. Thanks a lot. Um, we have really spent a lot of time this year to analyze and assess all the different surveys and IDN resources uh, um, that uh, we were looking into to have a better understanding how much IDNs are used, how they are perceived. Uh, next uh, panelist uh, uh, is uh, a great supporter of this study, uh, which we started uh, uh, three years ago, is Yanis Karklins, uh, um, Assistant Director General Communication and Information at UNESCO. Um, is a diplomat, uh, diplomatic career, and uh, um, not only he is uh, a uh, Latin ambassador uh, to the United Nations, uh, he was a um, Latin ambassador to the United Nations, but also is well known in the internet community because uh, he has uh, um, served as uh, uh, the chairman of the GAC for three years from 2007 till 2010. Uh, so I'd like to leave the, the floor to Yanis. And again, thanks a lot for uh, the support and this great partnership that uh, uh, was established with URIT. Thank you, Yanis. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, and I must, I must tell you that uh, the pleasure is, is uh, mutual, <laughs> if, I, if I may say. Uh, certainly, I have uh, my, my personal uh, kind of interest in, in supporting this and, and uh, and that stems from uh, the hist recent history when uh, I remember myself and a few other uh, ICANN and uh, CC community folks uh, were uh, kind of cornered uh, by uh, representatives of uh, Arab uh, CCTLDs uh, in the corner of the room and, and where they asked us, if you, don't, if you will not do something uh, with the IDNs, um, we will uh, think about alternative routes. So that was the really good encouragement for, for ICANN to um, uh, launch the process of um, uh, what, what is now known IDN CCTLD fast track. Uh, and um, this is also the reason why, uh, or that gives us, us information uh, in uh, this uh, uh, analytical study uh, on uh, the uh, IDN uptake. We see certain uh, trends uh, from the previous year, and uh, more information we will gather, uh, more um, uh, kind of uh, better analysis we will have. Uh, for UNESCO, this um, study is very important because that uh, goes in the direction of, of implementation of the uh, recommendations of use of multilingualism in cyberspace, which uh, were adopted in 2003 and where we're uh, reporting on a regular basis uh, to the member states uh, on the uh, achievements and uh, clearly uh, the study provides us with a lot of uh, very valuable information. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, or as Emily mentioned, the Director General of um, UNESCO uh, based on findings of 2012 study uh, made a public statement uh, where uh, she outlined the importance of technical work of technical community uh, in um, moving the development of uh, IDNs uh, forward and uh, encouraged uh, to continue in, in that, that path. Uh, myself, I wrote, uh, based on that public statement, I wrote uh, letters to chairman of uh, IETF and the chairman of uh, uh, IAB uh, asking them to draw attention of uh, respective constituencies uh, and uh, now when I spoke with um, 
uh, Yari, uh, he, uh, uh, he said that um, uh, we may expect uh, some sort of uh, attention from their side and particularly uh, attention to those engineers who are working on development of uh, applications and browsers and uh, what, what is identified in the report as uh, uh, remaining technical challenge. Uh, again, the Director General also congratulated the uh, technical community with a successful uh, emailing by or, or application of uh, uh, IDN email protocol. And uh, I think, again, the question is now just time and um, uh, how f uh, fast and widespread this uh, protocol will be used by uh, service providers. Um, whether IDNs will, uh, or how to, how to uh, break this uh, vicious circle as uh, Emily outlined in her presentation, um, and how to improve user, user experience. Um, when we're looking, looking to current uh, IDNs in the, um, uh, in the route, they are uh, very lo local, if, if one, one can say uh, big operators uh, uh, running local, local service. Nevertheless, um, the big uh, internationals are mostly in uh, Anglophone territory. And now when companies like um, uh, Verisign will be, uh, let's say, commercially interested in a good uptake of their IDN GTLDs, first IDN GTLDs, I think that will increase a lot pressure to um, uh, developers. To, uh, and I suspect that, or I, I predict that maybe in the next couple of years, we will really see a uh, dramatic improvement of uh, user experience because that is inevitable when, when um, big money uh, will uh, maybe uh, subs not substitute but, but um, uh, complement uh, the um, national and identical identity sort of drives behind use of IDNs. Uh, I think that, that that will be a, a stimulus for Further, further technological development. From our side at UNESCO, we are uh, talking to our delegations uh, through or by using this, this report, um, uh, telling them that uh, uh, there are also things on organizational side that needs, needs to be done, and uh, we will continue uh, doing uh, uh, this, this work uh, from uh, our perspective. So I will uh, maybe stop here, but uh, before that, uh, from my side, I also would like to thank uh, Yurid uh, for uh, supporting uh, this, this activity and studying, and I hope that uh, in the future uh, we will go from uh, one even more interesting to another even more interesting uh, study, and certainly that will be uh, useful uh, material for uh, all those who are interested in development of multilingual internet. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Yanis. Uh, uh, Thanks a lot, really. Uh, it was uh, um, a great pleasure uh, for us as well to, to work with you these three years uh, on the report, and uh, we look forward to, to continuing the, the work. Um, the, next, uh, the next speaker I'd like to introduce, and we are going to have a um, three speakers now that are coming from three different, uh, well, still the, still the internet family, but uh, three different sectors. And uh, the first one uh, is uh, um, Ong Bin, and uh, uh, Ong Bin Zhu is uh, uh, senior international strategist at CNIC uh, since 2010. He's also responsible for the new GTLD uh, application and internet governance related research project at CNIC. Uh, I must say that at the end of the ICON Beijing meeting, uh, uh, I and Emily, we were so lucky to, to meet uh, Ong Bin in his own environment at the Scenic Registry, and it was a, a great experience because we were really taken into um, a, a world uh, which is uh, very, very special for the way you handle uh, this uh, huge registry and uh, the way you manage the data, you treat the data, and the way you try to promote uh, the Internet and the domain name. Uh, in, in China, so uh, our compliments. It was really uh, a great visit uh, at the end of uh, the ICANN meeting in Beijing. So I'd like to um, leave the floor to you, and uh, I'm going to put your presentation up on the screen. If the 
floor is yours. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, my name is Hongbin Zhu. I come from Senec. Um, I'm in charge of the IDM uh, research and uh, also the IDM universal acceptance research in, in CINIC. And now I um, want to introduce a little bit about uh, how is, uh, is the Chinese IDM going in, in China. Uh, before I start to introduce about IDMs, I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Chinese language usage uh, on the internet in China. Uh, actually, we have a lot of internet users in China, uh, which is now almost uh, six, uh, 600 million users uh, in, in the t t uh, actually using the internet in China. And we have a lot of local content uh, developers, uh, which are very famous among the Chinese internet users. Uh, on the left side of the, uh, my presentation, PPT is uh, uh, some software developers, they all have a larger user basis. So, uh, as you can see in these uh, in these uh, numbers, uh, actually the Chinese language content is uh, getting uh, is is more close closer is closer to our users. And uh, according to another research I found on the internet, um, the Chinese language is uh, now the second biggest, uh, largest, lang uh, the second largest language on the internet, uh, which is almost, uh, uh, which is just uh, next to the uh, English language. And uh, uh, the study also said about that uh, the Chinese language will become the first language. Uh, on the internet in maybe in the next uh, 10 years. So <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's a huge, huge market. Uh, but uh, when we're thinking about the uh, Chinese IDNs, uh, the, the thing is, uh, it's a different thing. We need, have, uh, we need to do a lot of work for that. Next slide, please. Uh, actually, our study of the uh, Chinese IDNs started from the, the end of the uh, uh, 1990s, and uh, we have uh, cooperated with a lot of stakeholders uh, to research on the IDNs, uh, including our governments and uh, the acad academia. Uh, and uh, in 2000, we established an uh, uh, organization called Chinese Domain Name Consortium. Consortium. Uh, this uh, organization is a multi-stakeholder organization which combines the registries, registrars, and also uh, the user groups and uh, they all provide some recommendation about uh, user, uh, user experience about IDNs and also the technology standards, what it's gonna be, what, uh, user, what does the user expect. And uh, uh, in 2004, uh, due to our efforts, the Chinese RFC got published and uh, also in 2005, yes, it, it's, uh, it's also got published. And uh, a remarkable uh, milestone of us is that in 2010, our first IDN TLD gets uh, delegates in the route, which is the Zhongguo. It's a, uh, it's a simplified uh, TLD and the traditional TLD delegate together to us. I think uh, it's a pr promising thing because I, I will talk about the simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese later. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a best practice for us because we see simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese are almost the same. This next slide, please. Um, unfortunately, the number of uh, registration uh, of Dr. Zhongguo is uh, declining after it's delegate to the root. Uh, I think it's a major problem is uh, the user experience. Um, the end users, uh, most, uh, most of the end users doesn't know about the ideas. Uh, just the registrars trying to sell them. So we need, we need to improve uh, the user awareness uh, so we can come to uh, uh, the next uh, um, maybe climb uh, uh, for, for our TLD. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, yeah, I will talk about the Chinese variant issue. Uh, as you know, the uh, in, in the Chinese community, we have a true writing system, which is simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. Uh, they are used uh, in the same community, and uh, they can sometimes uh, they uh, can uh, interchangeable. So uh, user can mostly 
be uh, get it very easy to uh, get confused about the, the, the characters. So we have a developed a policy which called combined uh, delegation or combined registration uh, policy. Uh, this policy actually mandates that uh, the variants and the original uh, characters uh, belong to the same rest, uh, restaurant and uh, they resort to the same website. This is our policy and uh, this is a guarantee for the security of the end users. Uh, but, the, but now, uh, I think the new GTLDs, this best, best practice is not uh, being recognized uh, by ICANN or uh, the other registries, so we are still pushing forward to this, uh, this issue to ICANN and to the uh, other communities uh, with, re with re respect to the variant issue. Next slide, please. Uh, a promising uh, success uh, for us uh, in our side is the in, uh, email address internationalization. Actually, we started uh, email address internationalization uh, research uh, in 2004. And uh, in the last year, we actually sent the first uh, uh, Chinese email uh, f from uh, Beijing to the, uh, our community members in Taiwan and uh, Singapore and other, other community members. And uh, uh, this, F, this success uh, is uh, actually uh, attributed to um, the joint efforts of our uh, uh, community members, uh, which include uh, uh, TWNIC and uh, also uh, SingaporeNIC and uh, .Asia uh, and other uh, and uh, also the K Korean registry, uh, KISA and uh, uh, JPIS. Uh, they, they, they all have uh, made a great contribution to, to this, uh, this work and uh, we actually have a uh, uh, step into the intergovernment organization, which is APAC, uh, to promote the acceptance of the, the email address. Uh, this is a very promising phenomenon. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and the browser support is, is actually okay in China because we have uh, most of the users uh, in China actually use our local browsers <laughs> and uh, they, 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 they may uh, use the, 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 we call it the two, two, three, 360 browsers, it's the largest browser in China and uh, they uh, use th this kind of browsers and this kind of browsers actually support the Chinese idea and so we, we don't have uh, any uh, problem with the browser issue. Uh, but the mobile, there, it, it, there is some problem with the mobile issue. And uh, I, I want to talk a little more about uh, the email uh, because uh, actually I have experience to sending e emails uh, in Chinese uh, to other people. Um, and uh, I also have an uh, email account in, in, chi in Chinese, uh, but the problem is that they, they cannot receive it. Uh, actually, the CINIC ha have uh, developed a strategy which is we combine the Chinese email <laughs> with an ASCII email. And uh, if you can receive it, uh, if you cannot receive it, uh, we, we just uh, have an alternative email, <laughs> email to, send to send to you. It's, it's a, just an automatic the thing, yeah. So, so it's uh, it's uh, so something we can uh, make up for for the, for the today's uh, the phenomenon because the, it's not very promising, yeah. And um, the searching engines is very quite su supportive. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I want to share. Uh, finally, I want to share some ideas. Um, Actually, we have the uh, major standards uh, developers uh, for the Chinese emails and the Chinese uh, uh, IDN standards, and we are uh, we are also the developers for some minor languages, uh, which is actually in use in China, which, uh, which contains the language of Mongolia and also the uh, Uga uh, and. Uh, Uga is it's almost uh, the same as uh, uh, the language of the Uzbekistan. And uh, uh, we have also developed an IDN solution for them. And uh, it's not in wide use, but we, we are trying to push the, the, the uh, acceptance of the, these standards. 
Um, but now we are facing the problem is that um, the standards is there, but no one <laughs> knows about it. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, it's, uh, we, we still need to do a lot of things to promote this, uh, the acceptance of the standards. And uh, our government is quite supportive for the IDN issue because it enhances the integrity of our uh, language community, especially between China and Taiwan and also other uh, Confucius community. And uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, created a, a, a close relationship with other uh, community governments. And uh, they, ha they are quite supportive, uh, especially when we, are, when we were in APEC meetings. And uh, uh, another, po another point I want to raise is that uh, you, some user experience problem is still needs to be solved, uh, w which I list here, including the phishing and also uh, some uh, interu interruption uh, during when, when you access through the uh, Chinese IDNs. Uh, finally, I want to share some of my opinion about the future technology uh, which can actually promote the acceptance of the Internet. We're thinking about the voice recognition technology. Uh, we, we're actually researching on this kind of technology. You can actually say uh, sp or speak the, 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 the Chinese, Chinese language domain names and you can access the website. It's, it's, it's good for disabled people, uh, and it's also good for the people who cannot read English words. Uh, and that, that's, I think if we have a, uh, make some efforts on de develop a, this kind of a new technology, we can promote more acceptance uh, of the IDN issues. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ong Bin. And, uh, Again, thank you for the valuable contribution to this year's uh, report. Uh, the data you provided us are really valuable, and uh, uh, we really enjoy to enter uh, the world of IDNs, especially in, in uh, uh, the continent of, uh, you know, in the Asia-Pacific region. Um, so uh, I'm looking at the remote moderator corner. If uh, Minjun Park of uh, Kiza, which is the Korean registry, has managed to to access uh, the remote participation because um, she was also one of our panelists and she was supposed to have a, um, a remote presentation. But I understand there were some, uh, some issues. There's no connection. Okay. Thank you. So um, i like to leave the floor now to um, a very last minute uh, nice addition to the panel uh, because uh, um, and the nice addition is Peter Larson. Peter Larson is uh, um, a registrar. Uh, ICANN accredited registrar, URID accredited registrar is, is, register, uh, is registrar for many TLD extensions. Uh, he's also a member of the URID registrar advisory board. And uh, um, I really wanted to have uh, uh, Peter's perspective to understand, as I said uh, uh, at the beginning in the introduction, most of the registries, they do not uh, sell domain names directly to the end users. Uh, they do sell domain names via a network uh, of uh, uh, basically uh, retailers, uh, a network of what is in our jargon, they are called registrars. And Peter Larsen is uh, um, uh, the owner and the manager of Larsen Data, as is a Danish registrar, and he is uh, uh, well known in the community because he's very proactive in participating in ICANN meetings, but also in uh, uh, European CCTLD meetings where uh, he has been and was sometimes vocal to make sure that uh, um, the people could hear the registrar's perspective because at the end, registrars are those uh, uh, closer to the, to the end user community. Um, so I'd like to leave the floor uh, to Peter and thank him again for his last minute availability. And I'm gonna put up his presentation. Thank you. Um, well, it was a last minute uh, effort, so uh, I only have four slides and I don't have that much uh, nice statistics. Um, could we have the next slide, please? Um, 
As Giovanni told, we are based in uh, Copenhagen in Denmark, and we are running a free DNS service as uh, one of our uh, registrar capacities. And um, we, of course, have uh, included the IDN in our DNS service since roughly 2003 or 4. And um, this was due to the Danish registry added the IDN uh, for the special Danish uh, three letters we have. And uh, we have a lot of, well, experience with that since, uh, because we're also the registrar and selling. So we have the end customers contacting us with the issues. We we'll have the next slide. Um, the top one is a typical Danish domain, uh, IDN. And I put in a short link for it, so it can easily be typed by any of you here. But um, this domain is used as uh, a forward to another domain as many of the IDNs in the Danish language is because there is uh, very seldom used as a contact point uh, due to all the problems we heard from uh, the web browsers and the email um, issues. Um, if we could, I don't know if the internet is working, but the second link on that page, if we could get that up. If that's working, it should be connecting to the Danish registry, and they have a nice overview of the number of, of domains that is registered since 2004, how many of them that are uh, IDN, and how many of them that are Latin. So you could, if you scroll down, you can easily see that the numbers are hovering around 4 or 5% uh, of the TLD, which in my perspective is quite good, but it should have been quite higher since uh, the Danish letters are uh, commonly used in, in many names and uh, good domain names. should have been around 15 18% in my point of view. Um, we have a lot of customers contacting us uh, usually after uh, they get the domain and they get the website running and telling us people cannot contact us, the email is not working. And um, we have been emphasizing to people that they should get both the Latin and the IDN version, um, doing that for promotion and an email and mix them uh, nicely. So uh, I can recognize a lot of the statistics that uh, I heard here today, as, as um, that's how the end customer is reacting, and it's a bad end user experience, definitely. Um, we, we have seen since uh, 2004, we have the IDN in the Danish TLD, so the email issue has been a problem since. And it's just recently, last year, that uh, it seems to be getting a, a solution to this. And we, are, we have been telling our customers since 2004, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to say that a few more years, but I hope that the new GTLD process is going to speed up um, the software. And I hope that some of the registries or providers and software providers are, well, uh, helping the open source projects to understand the, the ITNs better and definitely uh, getting, getting it pushed a little further. Just recently, uh, Giovanni mentioned that um, some of the new DTLDs was, was uh, put into the root here a few hours ago, actually. And um, one of them is um, games in Chinese, or game, I'm not quite sure. Um, if you look that up in your web browser, the only one that is working out of the box is Firefox, of the Western web browsers. The rest of them actually go to a search page for Google. So there's definitely problems with the applications and the software that people are using still. So. 
my advice would be uh, if you don't if you have the possibility as a company a registry or whatever um, push your provider software provider push your uh, open source uh, community help them provide them funds or programming skills to to help with the IDN yes thank you Peter and again thank you for your last minute uh, availability uh, before I, I leave the floor to the last uh, panelist, uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, open the floor for questions if there's anybody who has a question, and I'll do the, the mic guy. Or is, is it working? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Peter van Roste. I'm the general manager of Center, the European CCTLD platform. I'd like to thank the panel for very interesting um, presentations. Um, Stunning numbers. Uh, the zero percent is, is something that's very hard to get our heads around, uh, especially in the times that everybody's cheering and clapping for the introduction of another four IDM TLDs to the root. Um, I have one. I have one one question that I, I might maybe have better wait until Mark had given his presentation to. Um, but if you assume that the software market is a pretty well functioning market. I mean, there are no restrictions to bringing any type of software to the market. Wouldn't it mean, wouldn't this logically mean that there is simply no demand for IDMs? Otherwise, somebody would have already a long time ago brought to the market a browser, uh, server, email server software that would perfectly well work with IDMs. Um, wouldn't have cost that much. It would have been pushed uh, happily by, I guess, the registrar channels, by the registries, um, by cultural ambassadors. Uh, it just didn't happen. Maybe because nobody's really asking for IDMs. And it's a provocative question. I don't think I know the answer to that. Thank you, Peter. It's a bit more provocative than the one I wanted <laughs> to ask. <laughs> so, uh, um, does anybody like? Thank well, you. Um, I guess. Over time, we have seen a lot of uh, plugins for, for email providers or um, Outlook and Internet Explorer, and some of them were working, some of them not working that well. Um, I just recently, uh, we have a provider that provides um, antivirus and anti-spam scanning software, Dutch company, big company, and they are definitely aware of IDN, they have some, some things are working in IDN and some things are not working in IDN. So they are aware of it. It's implemented, but it's not tested correctly because they, I don't know if they don't know it should work or how it should work, but definitely there's lack of knowledge um, or interest. I don't, I'm not sure why. It, uh, question that haunts me a lot as I'm, as I'm doing this study and, and writing it, and of course that's one explanation it could be, but I think that, that there are, um, I think Tim Berners-Lee put it really well about, you know, the internet is, is sometimes, is always someone else's problem, and the internet, he said, is like this great big commune, this amazing, wonderful commune where it fails because nobody takes the garbage out, and, be, and it's I think there are so many people who could be responsible for making it better, but actually the, the standards work is difficult. You know, these are these the, the, the fact that it has taken so long for the standards to develop isn't just because of laziness or fecklessness, it's actually because it's very difficult. And they have the, the, the market probably launched a long way because of other pressures, because of political pressures and uh, community pressures. The market probably launched a long way before it was ready, uh, but um, I'm, I, I don't know. You just feel that, you know, Hongbin said yesterday, I heard him saying on another panel, 80% of Chinese users, or people, sorry, people, have no concept of reading the Latin alphabet. That just, you just there is a market there. There <laughs> just has to be a market. Now, you're right, though, if the domain name market doesn't step up to the plate, that market will go, uh, will, uh, will access information differently. 
without a doubt. And they are already, but the domain name system underlies so many different applications. It's not just browsers and not just email that, in my opinion, it's necessary. And in my opinion, I think the market is there. Just, just say it's, it's not that that long time when uh, IBM email standard was adopted, 2012 by IETF. So it, it, is, it is not, IBMs have been around for a longer time, but, but standard itself hasn't been around for, for so long time. So, and, and uh, email is one of the most important functionality. As soon as that will, that will uh, start really uh, uh, working properly, I, I believe that this, uh, the, the market will pick up and then everybody will follow. I, I would even also use analogy of uh, IPv4, IPv6 transition. IPv6 is around for many years. So, and uh, there's no need of market. No, there will be need at one point. Okay. Actually, uh, as, as uh, this, this uh, distinguished panelist has uh, said, uh, we have uh, developed the idea email sp sp uh, standards, and uh, the problem we are facing is that um, the, the software providers don't accept the standards, uh, or they are they are trying to lock in the users to, to the, their current system. So they they they, they, are, they have no incentive to develop uh, the the next generation standards or or the standards which. Uh, fits the, the needs of the uh, Chinese language or, or other uh, international language users. So, um, I, I actu actually, I, I think the, there are some problems with the so software industry, uh, which is that um, if they have a developed a well uh, accept accepted uh, software, they have an incentive to uh, stay there. They, they don't make movements unless some someone else or some more powerful actors to push them to do that. I think uh, that's my own opinion. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And, and continuing to be provocative, uh, how long do you think uh, it will take uh, for IDNs to become popular? So which is the time span, like 5, 10 years, 15 years? Uh? We, I mean, Icon, Fadi, um, the CEO of Icon, announced uh, very proudly that there are those three uh, new GTLDs uh, up and running soon in the route. And uh, the market is huge because they are, you know, going to cater for big markets, the Arabic, the Russian, and the Chinese. Uh, but how long will it take for them, as well as for other IDNs, to become uh, popular and used? So, I will say 2015. And I stand for my word in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in my opinion, it might take a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, because uh, there are still things to be done, especially with respect to uh, ICANN's inefficiency <laughs> in solving the various <laughs> issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th there's a lot of things to be done. Yeah, we need the uh, international organization to support our best practices. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to promote uh, more awareness among the users, governments, and also the civil societies. Yeah. And, and uh, how much? Uh, uh, so I think okay. it's about uh, 2020. Okay. <laughs> okay, and we stop here with numbers, because <laughs> uh, otherwise it comes a lottery. But, um, how much of this, because uh, we have been speaking about uh, the importance of uh, um, end user awareness, education, and uh, how much uh, uh, you know, the different parties in the process should be involved uh, in this awareness process? Do um, you think it's something that should be a common effort uh, or should uh, mostly stay in the hands of the registries, uh, uh, GTLDs, CCTLDs, or registrars? Uh, or you know, in organizations like ICANN, um, those who are you know linked in the internet or, or Google search browsers, uh, what do you think? What what? Who's the most important uh, uh, you know, let's say, factor in this uh, educational chain? I would say that 
say that the, the application providers, because they are the people who are the gateway to the user experience, and they're not part of the, you know, they're not part of the conversation. I mean, it's nice to have Marco here, and I'm really interested to hear what Google will say. And it's not meant to be a challenge, but the the uh, Pat Kane of Verify when we were speaking to him earlier this year said that the IDN discussion at the moment is dominated by registries. They're the only people talking about IDN, and 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 most people in the world haven't actually heard of any uh, uh, registries at all. But they've certainly heard of the applications that they use every day. And if they're not seeing IDN links or in emails or in their online life, they're not going to become familiarized. And I think even when Chinese users are not, are not familiar, that there is the possibility to have, uh, we were looking at search results in Baidu where you've got completely Chinese environments and the only Latin script that you see are in the URLs in all of the search results. And uh, um, we were speaking with uh, Ibu Rina in similar um, similar search results in Google, that, 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 uh, but that, that that is improving to, 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 my, uh, to my knowledge. But I think that, that it's, sort of, it's got to be the people who are actually providing the mass market um, opinion. Thank you. I, I would certainly see uh, ISOC, ISOC's role in, in uh, this campaign, awareness raising and also uh, may, maybe capacity building in countries where IDNs uh, should have a much bigger role than they have today. Thanks a lot. That said, uh, um, I'd like to leave the floor now to the last uh, panelist. Uh, Marco Pancini is a senior European policy counselor at Google and is also um, a member of the Google policy team in Brussels. And prior to, to joining Google, um, he worked for um, eBay and uh, uh, iBazaar. And, uh, he has been uh, quite, uh, um, let's say, involved um, in the uh, last meetings uh, at ICANN level, uh, international level, IGF level, and is much into, uh, let's say, the, the policies around the domain name system as well. So the floor is yours. Thanks, Giovanni, for the introduction and for the invitation to this debate. I'll try to give a slightly different perspective and trying also maybe to see this, uh, this, uh, this issue from, from, the, the, uh, from our point of view and, and from the point of view of, of a global, uh, global player in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this world which is trying to, to improve access to content, is trying to improve also the communication between people speaking different languages. So first I would like to start from um, a very quick and easy analysis that I've done of uh, search uh, search keyword, the most search keyword on Google is, is Facebook. If you see over time from 2007 to today, which is funny because you see people not typing the, the URL but searching on, 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 on the search engine, which is, that tells you a lot about the debate that we had a few, few minutes ago. But again, if you look at the trend of, of how this term was searched since the beginning of, since the launch of, of Facebook, so 2007 to today, you can see from a very quick, and I hope you will have the opportunity to look at the animation, if we have the internet connection, you can see how there was a huge uh, shift from, from uh, receiving this search from English-speaking countries, here we go, to basically the rest of the world, which is uh, telling you a lot of That's a lot about uh, the fact that the Internet is becoming global. And uh, here we go. And, and, and if you see now the availability and uh, the interest from, uh, let's try it again one last time. Okay. No, it's not working, but again, I if you see the, the, this trend, you will see how the search, uh, the, the, the number of search that was coming from English speaking countries was absolutely the majority in 2007 and then it, again it was consistent in 2008 and 2009 but since 2010 you, you see how the search coming from uh, uh, big uh, countries and, and other, uh, other um, 
all the regions are becoming the majority up to today, where uh, uh, Turkey, Tunisia, and Venezuela, in, for sure, in blended terms, so this is um, a statistic which is taking in consideration both uh, the number of search and the population of Internet users making uh, which are assessing, uh, assessing our services from, from these countries. Now, three countries with three different languages, and three different, uh, uh, not only three different languages, but also three different alphabets, are actually scoring as the, the three uh, top uh, sources of search in relation to Facebook, which shows also the availability of these languages online through the platform, to, through a platform which allows the publication of content like, like like Facebook and uh, social networks in general terms. The second trend that I would like to mention is uh, the one relative uh, uh, an important service that we uh, launched already a few years ago and is becoming uh, more and more important in the Google uh, ecosystem, which is Google Translate. Google Translate uh, uh, supports, uh, at, at today, 71 languages across the world. And uh, supporting 71 languages uh, uh, gives you a perspective that uh, this is not just the result of a group of translators looking into the content available online and um, making uh, translation, so humans. This is a machine, uh, these are machine to machine activities. So what we are doing is we are taking the content that is available online, we are uh, using algorithm which makes this content uh, which match the, this content with the, um, uh, the, the requests that are made by the user through our translation, uh, translation machine, and, and therefore sh the, the accuracy of, of, of this uh, uh, system, uh, which is based on artificial intelligence, again, for a specific languages like Chinese, like Arabic, it shows how the availability of this content uh, is, is, is um, actually becoming even more, uh, more uh, effective and relevant uh, as per today, and so, and so is affecting in a, in a positive way the, 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 the functionality of uh, Google Translate. The third uh, trend which is connected to what we said before and also to Google Translate trend that I, I would like to mention is, uh, is uh, in relation to wearable technology. We, we will see a lot in the future uh, the wearable technology uh, playing an important role in improving the communi communication between individuals in the real world, but uh, using the, uh, the, the possibility and, and uh, the resources of the online world. If uh, you take uh, a um, tool like uh, uh, Google Glass, Google Glass uh, uh, has, has several applications, but one of the most interesting one is that it will allow conversation between the two individuals in, in, in the real world again that are speaking different languages directly by uh, uh, offering a real-time translation uh, thanks to the power of uh, the, 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 the big data, the, the cloud computing, but also thanks to the power of the availability of content online. So we, it will happen that two persons uh, speaking different languages wearing Google Glass will uh, will uh, will be able to communicate because the the, the re voice recognition in class will uh, recognize the language, will automatically translate the language, and and the user uh, interacting, they will have the possibility to listen directly the translation through the through the device, and and therefore speak in real time and answer to the, the to the conversation without uh, any 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 uh, problem. These, uh, I, I think uh, looking at these trends, uh, you can uh, see uh, two things. The first is that absolutely the Internet is global. Now I'm not saying something new, but uh, it's not uh, just um, a statement. It is a reality which uh, has a lot of implication, both in terms of uh, market opportunities and so in terms of also development of uh, new uh, technology and new, new applications. Second argument, we are, we, this is not uh, just a prediction, this is something that we are seeing here right now. In, and, and not just in, uh, how I can uh, describe, uh, basic application, actually the functionality of, of, of class that I just described can be, can be used today uh, if uh, any, any of us has a smartphone with uh, a translation service, uh, uh, real-time translation s system or application, you can see that this is actually something, a reality that we can use uh, today, but 
also in perspective in tools like Google Glass. So how to match uh, the um, development of this uh, application and, uh, and uh, services that are available for, for the vast majority of the user with uh, the struggle of IDNs and, and, uh, and the struggle of the standards that we described so far. So I think in, in understanding and in, in, and in analyzing the difference and the gap between the fast development of translation services which are in, uh, allowing communication both in the real world and in the offline world, Google Translate works, uh, and a lot of other services offered by other companies like, for example, Microsoft, works in real time in translating the content available online, on website, on social networks, and so on. So how to, uh, uh, analyzing uh, how this is going fast and at the same time the IDN is, is instead struggling, probably we can learn a lot and try to see how we can make the two process more aligned. Thanks a lot, Marco. I think the, the, the tool in Firefox, it works now, if you'd like oh, to. Yes. So should work. So again, as, as I was saying, I said, <laughs> so the, 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 the translation, the, 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 translation the, the connection is not uh, very, okay, so as I said, I put as, as, as um, parameter 2007 today, and you see a shift between the most, uh, uh, the, the search, uh, you see the shift from the search that were coming from English-speaking countries to uh, countries uh, from all over the world in relation to the keyword Facebook, and which shows also the clear uh, availability of this content in uh, different languages and in uh, using different alphabets as well. Thank you, Mark. I think it was a, a good visualization of the expanding of uh, uh, multilingualism in a certain sense. And uh, um, is there any question from from the our attendees? Yes, please. Is it mic? Yes. Uh, my name is Satish. I'm from India. I have a question uh, to the panel on uh, the fact that the next several million people coming onto the internet from India uh, are going to have mobile devices as their first devices, the first computers. Now, we learned that uh, the mobiles have a problem in IDNs. Uh, what efforts are being taken by the international community and the industry to ensure that this can be bridged? Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to. Uh, as, um, as I said, uh, Director General of UNESCO uh, drew attention to the uh, IETF. Uh, the technical community, the engineering community, that that is an issue. Uh, also, um, this report is, is a good reference material which gives uh, a very clear indication uh, what are the main problems. And um, uh, in 2012, uh, when we presented a previous year's report, uh, Vint Cerf, who was uh, uh, on the panel and uh, wrote the foreword for, for, for that edition, Acknowledge that uh, that that is an issue, and uh, from from his perspective, he also committed himself to to talk to those uh, who are responsible to fix that problem. Of course, that takes time, and uh, but this this campaign is is ongoing, and and more we can spread the word about these gaps which need to be uh, still crossed, then uh, faster that issue will be resolved. Yes, just su supporting that and completely ag agree with the premise of your question um, that most people, whether in developing countries and developed countries, are increasingly accessing uh, the internet uh, through mobiles and expecting much more of the mobile uh, internet experience. So completely agree. 
yes, there's, there's efforts on the policy side. Uh, uh, there's, uh, I think, often um, issues are solved in the internet by accident as much as by design, and I think uh, perhaps something that may provide an impetus and an incentive, uh, something I heard on a panel yesterday, is is the advent of the new GTLDs, and particularly the first that are being approved are in non-Latin scripts, and that large manufacturers, even of mobile devices, and, and large uh, vendors, who are in some cases the applicants of these uh, non-Latin script GTLDs, are finding to their embarrassment internally that their own uh, products don't work on their own products that might well provide an incentive and a motivation to, to do better. Thank you. Anybody else uh, likes to follow up on this question? I can, I can probably repeat myself, but uh, for sure what you can, uh, you can uh, give for granted is that uh, there is a huge attention from all, uh, all uh, the, the new technology ST ecosystem in these, uh, in these trends, so there is not an intention uh, to exclude uh, from, uh, the, the availability for, from the access to content a uh, big part of, of, of the world, especially in taking into consideration that, as, as Eke Schmidt wrote in his book very recently, the goal is, is the next billion of Internet users, it's not the, uh, only, uh, the maintenance of the, the already existing Internet user, but it's really looking in, in the next billion of uh, Internet users and therefore empowering them through uh, technology, which is most likely mobile, since uh, the connection issues are, uh, are, are making uh, the mobile trend more, more interesting for developing countries, is a, is a, is a, huge, uh, is a huge challenge for us. So understanding why this is not uh, taking up as uh, it should, not only from a standard and technological point of view, uh, I can understand there was done a lot of, uh, a lot of progress, but also from, from the take up of these, uh, these, uh, these standards from, from the, the, the ecosystem, and that this could be an, an, an interesting exercise. Thank you, Marco. There's another question. Irina, please. Hello, I'm Irina Danelia from Russia, and um, I'm Actually, I'm keeping asking every represent Google representative I meet the same question. So if it's not a question exactly to you, you probably could address it uh, to the right person. But, uh, and if, if I missed, uh, then just please uh, repeat and explain. Uh, when uh, does Google plan to provide uh, full I, uh, that Google Gmail plans to provide full ID and email support? Very good question, and uh, as, as you can imagine, this, uh, this is a question that requires uh, the, an answer from somebody who is working on, on this project. But since, uh, as, as you said, I know from also from my colleagues that is a, is a recurring question, I think we need to provide an answer, so I will uh, be active, uh, proactive in asking the Gmail team to uh, publish uh, on their blog post something in order to clarify this point. I would also... Uh I would appreciate if you do that and the, if you also probably can point out the right people to address because like our um, letters to just Google representatives in Russia were left unanswered and we probably just uh, tried to reach the wrong people. So if you let us know who the right people, we would be happy. We will. Thanks. I say she, she's very tough on questions. I still remember the question she, she asked me at the end of my presentation about our environmental responsibility in the last uh, Central General Assembly. So I shouldn't, uh, and that's, that's, by the way, we are environmental friendly. So uh, just in case, no, but thank you. I think it was a good question. And, and it's a good question. Is there any other question from, from the floor? Because I think it was, it's a good question uh, um, to wrap up this, uh, this workshop uh, in the sense that there is a great call for action at different levels to make sure that IDN, um, IDNs become successful and become um, a good part uh, of the bridge uh, to uh, build uh, more and more online multilingualism uh, to allow people to get connected uh, in their own languages and to communicate in their own languages uh, 
uh, in the internet at, at all levels. I don't know if there's any panelist uh, who like, uh, uh, likes to say a final word. Yanis. Thank you, Yuri, then let's continue working on these issues. Thanks a lot, uh, and let's say I'd like to thank all the panelists. Uh, I would also thank uh, the two panelists uh, who couldn't uh, be uh, with us today, who are Pat Kane of Verisign and uh, Min Jung Park of uh, Kisa, the Korean Registry, and unfortunately uh, they were not able to, to join us today. Um, but we will continue to uh, investigate uh, the beautiful and complex uh, IDN environment uh, with this report in the year ahead, uh, and uh, we believe that this report is uh, a small element that can contribute to generate further awareness uh, around uh, IDNs. Uh, again, the report uh, is available on the memory stick here uh, on this desk, please free, free to, to pick up some of these memory sticks, uh, and uh, also is going to be uploaded uh, in this European morning on the urid.eu uh, uh, slash uh, insights uh, um, website. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks to the uh, help desk. Yeah, thank you.